How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? It's wonderful to be a child of God and be able to come to the house of the Lord, to hear, to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take some prayer requests tonight. And uh, Brother Jeff, you said Brother Jeff was sick. So Brother Jeff, keep Brother Jeff Chapman in prayer. He's sick. And uh, it's been a lot of, uh, I don't know if it's a flu, but some type of symptoms going around where people getting almost like a cold, but a little bit worse. I know how that is. I've been through it already, so. But uh, anybody else keep those uh, the babies we've been mentioning in prayer, Jackson, and uh, the other one was uh, the newest one was uh, Levi. I know that one of his names. K one. Okay, let's remember that in prayer. Uh, yes, okay, remember Sister Shirley Floyd, she's having problems with her leg. That's my mother-in-law, by the way. And uh, <clears throat> anyone else? Pray one for another. That's what the Bible tells us, to pray one for another. We ought to do that, and of course, keep our pastor in prayers continually <clears throat> on the battlefield, uh, continually striving to help someone and to help save a soul. <clears throat> Anyone else? But if that's all, well, John, would you like to come and open us in prayer? And you can lead us in a song if you'd like. It's all by our heads. Precious Heavenly Father, God, we're thankful for another opportunity to come into your house. We're thankful, <clears throat> Lord God, that all things are working together for the good. And to those who love the Lord, we're called to his purpose. Lord, we pray that in the times we're in, Lord God, that we form a unity like never before, Father. Seeing the things that are happening around us, Lord God, and things that are taking place, Lord, in the spirit, Lord. Help us to be sensitive, to walk in your spirit, Lord, in the word not to walk in our own minds and our own conceits, Father. We just pray for each and every prayer request, Lord God, that we're mentioned tonight, Lord God, that little babies, Lord God, that are sick. We know that, Lord, uh, Candace's little baby, God, we pray, Lord God, that your will be done in this situation, Lord God, as Brother Rob prayed the other night, Lord, we just pray that you continue to have your way, Father. Lord, maybe through this, Lord God, that maybe eyes can be open, Lord God, ears can hear, Father. Lord, bless our services tonight, Lord, and we just pray that you'd strengthen us, Lord God, that we could walk in your word and your mind each and every day, Lord, not to yield to our own minds and our own failures. We thank you for each and every one that's here tonight, Father, we pray that you bless our pastor, bless us, Irene, Lord God, and give him added strength, Lord God, as he goes from day to day, Lord God, fighting these battles. Let us get on board with him to help him, Lord God, even more so now. We thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Not any other place I'd rather be than the house of God. All right, let's sing this song. Each day I'll do a golden deed. What's the name of that song? It's already pulled up here. Life's Evening Song. Okay, beautiful life. That's it, a beautiful life. Mm -hmm. Each day I'll do a golden deed <clears throat> by helping those who are in need. My life on earth is but a span, and so I'll do the best I can. 
Life's evening sun is sinking low. A few more days, and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done. Where there will be no setting sun. To be a child of God each day, my light must shine along the way. I'll sing His praise while ages wait, and try to help some troubled soul. Life's evening sun is sinking low. A few more days, and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done. Where there will be no setting sun, the only that will endure is one that's kind and good and pure and so for God I'll take my stand each day I'll lend a helping hand life's evening sun Sinking low, a few more days, and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done. Where there will be no setting sun. Let's sing that chorus one more time. Life's evening sun. It's sinking low, a few more days, and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done. Where there will be no setting sun. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand tonight. Amen. Worthy of our praise. We're going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to sing one more if that's all right. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem. Amen. Shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadow. Given a light for those who long have gone. Guiding the wise men on their way Unto the place where Jesus lay O oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem Shine on O oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem Shine upon until the glory's dawn. Oh, give us thy light to light the day unto a land of perfect day. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star Guiding the pilgrim through the night Over the mountains till the break of dawn And into the light of perfect day It will give out a lovely ray Oh, beautiful star of the light. 
Brighter and brighter he will shine, O oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on, O oh, beautiful star. Star of Bethlehem, shine on. I wonder if we could sing that last verse one more time. Really think about what you're singing, amen. Beth the rest for the redeemed, the good and blessed. Yonder in glory when the crown is won. For Jesus is now the star divine, brighter and brighter he will shine. Beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine upon until the glory's gone. You want that light to shine on you tonight? Let's worship the Lord. Amen. To light the way unto a land of perfect day. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. One more time as Brother Jonathan comes back. Shine upon us until the glory is dawn. Oh, give us the light to light the way unto the end of perfect day. Star of Bethlehem, shine on. Amen. Are you thankful for that star? Amen. Uh, I also wanted to mention, I was over there thinking as we were singing, but uh, keep the nursing home and ministry in your prayers. You know, it's a, uh, and if you can, come to, come and, uh, uh, be a part of it. You'd be surprised how much you'll get blessed. And you think, well, we're just going to try to bless these folks. A lot of times we go over there and we get blessed. And uh, we really do. So uh, we have one. We have two on Sunday, one at 4 o'clock and one at uh, 7 o'clock. And then we have one on Thursday nights, which got canceled this past Thursday night. And it's uh, anybody who wants to come thing. It's not no set. Uh, we we kind of split up in groups so we could do two and everybody didn't have to feel obligated to go into both. But if you feel like it and you want to go to both, uh, that's good too. But uh, I'm going to ask you to remain standing just for a moment. And the ladies, I'm going to turn it over to the ladies and let them uh, lead you in a worship song. And then they'll have the children. And uh, just worship the Lord and prepare to receive the Word of God. Amen.
Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn in, know a little fire is burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I once was lost in sin. Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our trouble. Our faintest cry, answer by and by. Feel a little prayer will turn in. Know a little fire is burning. Have a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my path seems drear without a ray of cheer. Then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of of sin may rise and hide the starry skies but just a little talk with Jesus clears the way have a little talk with Jesus tell him all about our troubles hear our pain has cried answer by and by feel a little prayer will turn in no Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our trouble. You'll hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. Feel a little prayer will turn in. You'll know a little fire is burning. Have a little talk with Jesus makes it right. You can all be seated as the children come up.
My devotion is about obedience. Obedience is something I'm sure all of us struggles with sometimes. Even if it's as small as being told to do the dishes or mop the floor, sometimes we are told to do things by God that we don't feel like doing. No matter how hard or easy it may be, we need to put our flesh aside and be obedient. Proverbs 16:20 says, "Whoever gives heed to instruction prospers, and blessed and blessed is he who trusts in the Lord."
I've been down to the river I'm not the same A prodigal return All my hope is in Jesus Thank God that yesterday is gone I'm no stranger to the prison I've worn shackles and chains I've been freed and forgiven I'm not going back, I'll never be the same. That's why I sing. Oh, my hope is in Jesus. And thank God that yesterday is gone. All my sins are forgiven. And I've been washed by There's a kind of thing that just breaks me Breaks him down to his knees God, I've been broken more than a time or two Yes, Lord, then he picked me up And showed me what it means to be a man Come on and sing All my hope is in Jesus Thank God that yesterday is gone All my sins are forgiven I've been washed by the blood Soften my heart, Lord. Soften my heart from all indifference. Set me.
to feel your compassion to weep with your tears come soften my heart Lord soften this prayer with us. Soften my heart, Lord. Soften my heart. From all Set me apart to feel your compassion, to weep with your tears, come soften my Soften my heart to feel your compassion, to weep with your tears. Come, soften my heart. in my heart in so my life you have been faithful you can all stand with us in so my life you have been so so good with every sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never failed me in all my days. I've been held in your hand. And from the moment that I Still lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And so my life you have been faithful. And so my nights you were close like no other I know you as my father I know you as my friends and I am living in the goodness of God and so my Oh, I will sing of the goodness 
to God. Cause your goodness is flowing out of, flowing out of me. Your goodness is flowing out of, flowing out of me. With my life laid out, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is flowing. for your presence. I ask that you speak to your people tonight, God. I ask that you say something that may challenge or answer a question, God. Bless the people that have come out, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Try to come in at the end of the song because I'm not a singer, so y'all can be seated. Brother Rob called me at the very last minute to um, to take the service, and I was sitting back there, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm praying, and I'm asking for guidance, and a couple words kept coming to my head, and Allie got up here in her devotion. She, um, she said one of the words that kept coming to my head, so I was like, okay, thank you, Jesus. Um, she said obedience, and I was thinking about what is what is obedience to us. To a child, it's one thing. To an adult, you know, it has different meanings, you know, and what is obedience for you individually to God, to the laws of the land, to our church, to our family? There's rules that we all go by. Obedience to our family obedience to the law it's not it's not asked of us if you want to have obedience in your life you have to have obedience in your life without obedience it's just it's chaos there's there's no structure without structure it's i mean we basically see the structure failing in our country and in our world and you see what's happening it's there's chaos all around us and there's just there's no obedience to anything anymore hardly i was uh i was talking to my grandson the other day about this very subject and as they grow they seem to think that their boundaries of obedience seem to kind of disappear and get further out they uh I remember when I was their age, you know, it's up until about 11 years old, it's like I listen to mom and dad, I listen to mom and dad. About that 12-year-old mark, all of a sudden, I'm smarter than mom and dad. And it's something that we all, we've all done. I mean, there's not nobody sitting here that at one point or another looked at an adult and thought, you have no idea what you're talking about. You don't know me. You don't know what's in my head. You have no clue. Maybe back when you was little and the horses and wagons was all over the land, it was different. But now we have cars and cell phones and you don't understand. 
I mean, it's, it's, it's silly and we can say things like that, but the truth is the truth. And these kids nowadays are electronically raised and, and computer savvy. You know, we didn't, I grew up when computers were being invented, you know, the first computer desktop, you had to put what was called a floppy disk in it. You take it out and you got no computer. You know, everything was on this little square floppy disk drive and that was it. Or you had dial up and God forbid somebody had to use the phone while you was on the computer because then you're done. But um, back to obedience and rules that we have to follow. I was really thinking about, you know, the word rules as an umbrella statement. How much falls under that? I mean, if you seriously think about it, you got a driver's license, there's a whole other set of rules that apply to you every time you get in the car. There's, there's the speed limit. I mean, you have to use signals, seat belt. Uh, there's a whole set of rules. If you're, if you're a contractor, you know, sometimes the homeowner set rules and boundaries for you. You have to follow those. There's the state sets rules for you. You're going to build something that has to be within a spec, you know, and, but the, the Bible is our, our boundary, our guidebook for, for the church. And we're being taught our boundaries and guidelines every single service from, from this sacred desk. And I'm not standing here telling you I'm teaching you. I'm, I'm telling you that I'm, I've been paying attention and I'm trying to learn. And this is where our rules go forth. You know, and, and our minister, um, our preacher, is getting his boundaries and guidelines from from God. You know, he's the man's a prayerful man, and and when he comes up here before us, you know, he's he's been before God long before he's before us. And um, not to get off on a side subject, but back to the rules. Um, Brother Melvin was a truck driver. The rules for a tractor trailer are different for the rules for a car totally different set of rules he's under stricter guidelines you know brother melvin couldn't get a cdl when he was 16 years old he had to prove that i've had time behind the wheel uh, i've got you know you can't have so many moving violations you have to have a clean driving record you have to have a you know they have to look and say okay this this person's proven himself he's going to be able to get a cdl then you have to go take the tests and uh, it's, the same, it's the same in the Lord. You know, the Bible says that nothing comes on us as unaware. Everything that's happening in the spirit, there's something in the natural showing us, guiding us, letting us know, hey, this is going on. You know, hey, pay attention. That, that stop sign's just a stop sign sometimes. Sometimes that stop sign has a little bit more meaning in your life. You know, and we, we have to be a little bit more sensitive to the spirit to the word of God. And I know we don't live by types and shadows and allegories, but I've really, as of late, been seeing a lot more things that are showing what's going on in the spirit. And it's, it's a very, very scary time. You know, it's, there's, there's things happening, not just in our world. That's, that's nothing. Look at our church, look at our neighborhoods, you know, look at it in our own families. You know, there's people that, when I, when I came here, there was people in this church that I thought, you know, I looked up to for strength and guidance. And I was like, man, that's a, that's a strong brother in the Lord right there, you know. And, and I, at that time, was like, I, that's what I'm going to pattern myself after because I've seen stability in them. And, you know, a lot of these brothers aren't here no more. Stepped outside the boundaries. The second you step outside the boundaries... Man, Satan's there waiting for you. Amen. You know, you're not going to, you can think you're strong, and I know that sometimes there's strength that you can, you can fall down and get back up, but I've seen too many, too many people that I, that I drew strength from, and I thought that it was very strong that I've watched them fall down and not get back up, and then brothers, they're not here no more. You know, and I... 
it all goes back to the boundaries. They stepped outside the boundaries, the things that was coming from the sacred desk time and time again. Brother Rob says one thing all the time. I know I'm repetitive. I know I'm repetitive. I know you've heard this, but you're not getting it. Do you think he just says that just to fill time while he's standing here? He says it for a reason because there's, we're not at times, we're just sitting there with a stare we're in the service, but we're not receiving what's coming from here. And I'm not trying to blame anybody because I sit back there and there's times I walked out and I couldn't tell you exactly what was preached. I got so many other things going on in my head and I, and I walk out of here and I, and I literally go like, man, that was a fast service. What did he say? What did he say? And I have to go back and watch it sometimes and I was like, I didn't get none of that while I was there. I just, I didn't pay attention to my shame. I didn't, you know, and I'm a person that have scars and marks and mental scars and marks from stepping outside the boundaries numerous times. I can tell you it's not a good place to be. But we do it. I mean, as, as humans, <laughs> it's like we love to test those boundaries. You give us just the opportunity. Man, we're going we're gonna to push towards that boundary and see just how far we can stretch it. And I watch this in my, in my grandchildren you know, when, when my grandson was little, I was watching him one time, and there was some, uh, I don't even remember what it was, cookies, candy, something. It's on the table, and he walks up, and he's looking at me, and he starts to reach for it. And I said, Gabe, I said, don't you do it. And he's looking at me, and he stops, and then he's like, I think he's not really being serious. So he takes another step, and he goes towards it, and he starts reaching, and I was like, Gabriel, don't you do it. My mistake, I said, don't you do it two times. After the first time, and I seen him continue, I should have wore him out. Because I, at that point, was setting boundaries for this kid. I was teaching him, he's not really serious when he says it the first time. You know, and sometimes I think we've got a little lulled to sleep in our walk with God because things have been going so great for so long, and there's been not a lot of... Um, God spanking us, I guess. We've had it. This I see a lot of people in a lot of churches. I, I meet people daily. I, I try to talk to people about God. And everybody is just so blessed and got it going so good. And, and I listen to the testimonies of the brothers in this church and, and the sisters. I hear them talk. And one of the things that everybody's thankful for yeah, of course, it's blessings, but it's, it's the spankings we get. It's the correction we get because you're not going to have those blessings unless you got that correction somewhere. You know, when you step outside the boundaries, somebody's got to tell you, hey, you're outside the boundaries. Brother Melvin is a truck driver. You all drive cars. Sometimes you get out on the road and then the highway and you're driving for miles and there's no signs and you're like, am I still on the right road? And then you see that sign. Yep, I'm still on the right road. And you feel like... Okay, I thought I missed my turn. You ever done that? Yeah. Not nowadays. we got GPSs. It's going to start screaming at you a mile before. You don't, have to, you don't have to remember boundaries because something's trying to remember it for you. And unfortunately, that's how we get. We get lulled to sleep in our, in our walk with God. We've got a preacher. We've got a brotherhood. But sometimes we've got to be accountable for ourselves. You know, we've got to look at ourselves and say, am I at the edge of the boundary? Am I trying to push the boundary? We got a good brotherhood here, and they'll, you know, they'll keep you in check. But sometimes, man, if you ain't keeping yourself in check, you're going to get outside that boundary that quick. You're not even going to realize it. And then that spanking comes, and you're like, what, what, what did I do to deserve this? How did this happen? Take a look behind you five miles when you left the boundary, dummy, because that's how it happens. And I'm... I'm not trying to rebuke anybody. Believe me, I've got more spankings than I can even remember. I get whooped all the time because of my ignorance and foolishness. I'm standing here telling you guys my problems. If that stone hits you too, hey, get back in the boundary. I was uh, obedience. You know, that's what I started to talk about. What a tough word that is if you really think about it. Who, who can really honestly, 100% honesty, raise your hand and say, I've got that covered, obedience? 
I know. That's scary. Where do we think that we can be disobedient? I tell my grandson this all the time. What makes you think that you've got the right to be disobedient? You tell me where you're the one in charge and you can be disobedient. And then I catch myself going, my gosh, I'm talking to myself. Well, there's God going, what makes you think you're in charge? What makes you think that you can be disobedient? What gives you the right to go ahead and think you're going to do what you're going to do? There's, there's, there's no answer for that. I mean, there is an answer. You don't have the right. We don't have the right. We've been given everything, everything. And even if it wasn't everything that pertaineth unto life here, the one thing that we've been given, salvation, how can you be disrespectful to the Lord just receiving that? Every, every word in the Bible, we should just be groveling to follow, saying thank you, God, just for the mere fact that we're not going to burn forever. We forget that, though. We get complacent. It's easy to do. We get complacent. I get complacent, and it's, you know, you wake up, I got this job to go do. You talk to somebody at the job, your mind's wandering off on their problems, or not even their problems, your problems. You know, you got a big bid that you got to go, you know, put a bid on, do the paperwork for. Brother Pete, how many times have you sat up all night long worrying about a customer putting a bid in on your computer doing drawings? Not thinking about God. And I know there's time for work. I know we're supposed to do that. But I know the Bible says, you know, you're supposed to pray without ceasing. And Brother Rob says that a lot too, and I was always... You know, when I first heard it, I was like, ha, right, how are you going to do that? You don't necessarily have to, in your mind, sit there and pray. Once you get to a point with God, your spirit is constantly having that contact with the Lord. And without you even knowing it, you're praying. You know, it's funny, today on a job, I, uh, I was reminded of just how much God cares about the little things. I had four, I had eight locks to put in, four deadbolts, four passages. I know this means nothing to y'all, but I just, bear with me for a second. They were bright brass, all one color. New house, expensive house in Greensboro. And these people have already waited a week for me to get there. I got the last four locks from the shop in bright brass to install in these people's home. I get there, I'm installing these locks, and I'm sitting there going, wow, I'm, I'm thanking God because it's a big job. I'm getting paid good. It's an easy job, and I got the last four locks in bright brass. How's that going to happen? So on my third lock, I open a box, and it's brushed nickel. And I was like, how in the world did that happen? I looked at the box. It says bright brass. I open it. The lock is brushed nickel. I'm a lock short. Can't get it from the shop. It's going to put me behind. I don't have one on my truck because I had to go to the shop to get them because I checked my truck first. So I'm sitting there, and I was like, well, I'll just put in what I got and just, you know, I'll have to discount the job to the customer and apologize and walk out of there and try to make do. And so I'm putting in the other locks, and I got to thinking, I'm like, Billy, that's not how it works. It doesn't work that way. You're a child of God. And your father says that if you ask, no matter how small it is, he's going to provide. And I was like, okay, God, you said, you said to test. You test the word. God, I need this. I need this. You know, I don't, I'm trying to save face with a customer. I've already witnessed to him. And now I'm going to tell him I can't do your job because of the lack on my part because that's what it was. I should have checked the locks before. But so I was like, okay, I'm going to go out there in my van. I already know it wasn't there. I'd searched that van before. And I said, I know. I'm walking out there the whole time trying to keep that devil off my shoulder because he's telling me, you've already searched that van. You've already searched that van. And I'm going, I know God could put it somewhere I didn't look. So I went in there and I opened the cabinets and I'm looking around. And I opened the cabinet at the back and I swing it open and right there sitting in front of me is one bright brass entry that I did not have on my truck before I needed it. 
And I'm about in tears walking back into these people's house. And they have no idea. And I'm trying to avoid them because in my head I'm going, how, how does God look down on us and say, I got you. You know, I got you. I have been doing my best to stay within the boundaries of what I'm supposed to. I, I fail. I make mistakes. But in my feeble attempt with my crude way, I'd look down and said, I got you, man. I got you. My word is true. You tested it. I'm showing you. Here you go. If you stay within the boundaries, it doesn't matter what you need, when you need it, where you're at, God's going to provide it. You believe that. God put a lock in my truck today, and I promise you it wasn't there. I searched it. I know every nook and cranny in that truck. I know what hardware I have on my truck. That's how I make my living. I know what I have. I know what I don't have, and I did not have that lock before God stuck it on that truck today. You know, nobody else in this building right now, you tell them that story, they're going to be like, huh, okay, psycho. That's what they're going to say. And, and you, if you ask them, are you all living within the boundaries of God? They're going to say, oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, of course I am. What makes you think I'm not? I mean, that's how it goes. It's comical sometimes, I know, and I'm not trying to make light of anything. I'm not trying to get you all to laugh and, and joke with you. I'm just saying these are the things that every single one of us has seen. I mean, every single one of you are businessmen here, and you deal with, with naturally carnal-minded people, and that's everybody's going to heaven, everybody's a Christian, everybody's living within the boundaries of God. You know, it's their boundaries and our boundaries are a little bit different. I think ours is a lot tighter than theirs. Thank God for that, though. You know, I know within my boundaries, I can see the end. You know, their boundaries is too big. You can't see everything. They don't know where they're going. I know I rambled. I hope I, hope I said something to maybe make you think a little bit. You know, are, are we in the boundaries? Are you? Because I've been outside the boundaries and didn't know it. I thought I was. I mean, I really... I know I've kept you guys far too long. Well, if you all stand, I hope and pray that in that short time that maybe God said something to you, that maybe, maybe something clicks. If nothing else, I hope the grandchildren listened. We're all children, brother, and that's uh, our boundaries just get a little tighter as we get older. The more you know, the more boundaries you got. Amen. Amen. I'm not a singer, so, and I feel completely awkward standing here not singing, so... <laughs> Brother Pete, if you'll come up and sing a couple songs with them and close the service out. And if there's any prayer requests, the altars are open. I'd be glad to pray with anybody. Um, I love you all. I, I really do. Amen. All right, brother. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. There's an old song that Keith Green used to sing called um, To Obey is Better Than Sacrifice. He said, I don't need your money, I want your life. Y'all ever, ever heard that song? Y'all need to learn it. It would be a good song for you guys to learn. Praise the Lord. Uh, just give me a, give a G real quick. Mm -hmm. Children sung the song. Let's sing this together. Give me that whole, whole. Give me a G. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody.
everybody makes me love everybody this is good enough for me oh give me that old time religion give me that old time religion give me that old time religion it's good enough for me it was good for my mother and my father it was good for my mother and my father it was good for my mother and my father it's good enough for me give me that old time religion give me that old time religion give me that old time religion it's good enough for me praise the lord y'all got one in mind brother Amen. Let's just sing this song together. Praise the Lord. Mm, give me a G. I love him and I love him all because he first loved me. And he purchased my salvation on Calvary Tree. Sing with me. Oh, uh, I love him and I. I love him all because that he first loved me and he purchased my salvation on Calvary tree more time with me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I love him, Lord, I love him, all because that he first loved me, and he purchased my salvation on Calvary's tree. Praise the Lord. By one man's disobedience, death and sin came into the world. But by one man's obedience, life and everlasting life came into the world. So to obey is better than sacrifice, because they offered up sacrifices for many years. And with those things, with the sacrifice and bulls and goats and doves and these kind of things, it never cleared the conscience, never cleansed the soul. And the blood atonement had to be done every year and was brought back to God's remembrance. But you know what? He threw it as far as the east from the west when he received the sacrifice of the perfect lamb, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He gave himself as the perfect sacrifice and God received that and if we believe that then you have the righteousness that he has and you have the obedience in your heart that he gave to the father and the father looks at you as very own son and all those disobedience we do in the flesh we get chastened for it but the thing is aren't you glad that our sins go before him to the throne of judgment we come here to the church the word comes from the sacred desk and we take it to heart. Don't resist the word. Let's not take anything, you know, we meditate on his laws day and night. We'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water, bring forth fruit in due season. Praise the Lord. You might get become an old tree, but you can still produce some fruit. And uh, there's some oak trees that are hundreds and 200, 300, 400 years in. Some of them olive trees up there in the Mount of Olives. Some of those are, I heard were dated back to the time of Christ still producing fruit. Isn't that wonderful? Brother, why don't you close us in prayer? All right. Let's bow our heads. Precious Heavenly Father, we just thank you, dear God, for your word tonight, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us 
this exhortation, Lord, that we need to stay in the boundaries of your word and we need to learn obedience, Father. Even the scriptures remind us that you are learned obedience by the things you suffered. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, to help us to learn obedience. God, we want to give you glory, honor, and praise in all things. Lord, we continue to remember our pastor. Lord, that we will be a help to him, Lord, as he is striving to uh, win souls and to serve you. We ask you to bless our fellowship, Lord, downstairs. And in all things, we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. <laughs>